जी बेटा असल सो टुडे वी आर सॉल्विंग मे जून टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन पेपर थर्टी फोर दिस इज पेपर टू ऑफ ए लेवल्स केमिस्ट्री एंड दिस इज रिलेटेड टू प्रैक्टिकल एंड प्रैक्टिकल विच वी आर सॉल्विंग टुडे इज रीडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन राइट सो दिस इज रीडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन आई हैव ऑलरेडी डन टू और थ्री लेक्चर ऑन एसेट बेस्ड टाइट्रेशन Now this question is related to redox titration. Now it says that read through the whole method before starting any practical work. Where appropriate, prepare a table for your results in the space provided. So this is very important when you are starting a practical. Read the whole question thoroughly first, and then make your tables, and then start the performance part. Right. So show your working and appropriate significant figures. in the final answer to each step of your calculation now the question starts from here iron contain uh, iron wire contain impurities you will investigate the percentage by mass of iron the percentage by mass of iron in a sample of iron wire so let's suppose we have an iron wire suppose if this is an iron wire and we want to find out the percentage by mass of iron in this iron wire obviously it contains many impurities so we want to find out what percentage of iron is present in this iron wire a sample of iron wire is reacted with an excess of sulfuric acid so we have reacted iron wire with an excess of sulfuric acid to produce a solution of iron 2 sulfate so iron wire react with sulfuric acid we get iron 2 sulfate Uh, you will titrate the solution of iron 2 sulfate with potassium manganate 7 of known concentration so from here redox titration starts so we are titrating the solution of iron 2 sulfate with KnO4 which is a strong uh, oxidizing agent right and to determine the amount of iron 2 ions present and hence the percentage by mass of iron in the wire you may assume the impurities do not form any product that react with potassium manganate so we are just going with the assumption that the impurities present are not reacting with the uh, oxidizing agent so the equation for the reaction of iron 2 ions with manganate ion is this one iron 2 ions react with manganate ion to give uh, in the presence of acid to give fe3 plus iron 2 oxidizes into iron 3 manganate ion reduces into mn2 plus right so <coughs> fb1 is 0.0 fb1 is 0.02 moles per dm3 potassium manganate fb1 is 0.02 moles per dm3 potassium manganate fb2 is a solution of iron 2 sulfate prepared by reacting 6.02 gram of iron wire with sulfuric acid to make 1 dm cube of a solution so fb1 is oxidizing agent and fb2 is the solution of iron 2 sulfate uh, which is prepared when iron wire reacts with sulfuric acid fb3 is dilute sulfuric acid now let's read the method fill the burette with fb1 and pipe 25 cm cube of fb2 into a conical flask right So Fb1 is potassium manganate, which is the oxidizing agent. So this is a burette, which is filled with Fb1, KmO4. All right. So KmO4 uh, is basically the dark purple color. We normally do not fill it up to the zero mark, right? Because it gets difficult to observe the zero mark. So we'll start from uh, 1.0. So let's suppose this is our starting point. We are starting from 1.00. and this would be the initial volume and in the conical flask conical flask is filled with fb2 which is the uh, solution of iron 2 sulfate so the conical flask it contains 25 cm cube of 25 cm cube of fb2 right so fb1 which is oxidizing agent is filled in the burette and fb2 is filled in uh, conical flask next uh, use the measuring cylinder to transfer 25 cm cube of fb3 into the conical flask which is the uh, acid so fb3 is also added 25 cm cube of fb3 uh, acid is also added in the conical flask so it contains acid as well 
and then uh, they're saying they perform a rough titration and record your unit readings in these space blues. So how would we perform a rough titration? We'll open this tab, right, and the uh, oxidizing agent, which is Camino 4, will start entering into the conical flask drop by drop, and we'll observe the color change. And uh, as soon as it gets light pink, we'll stop, uh, we'll stop adding Camino 4, right? So as soon as we get a light pink color, a light pink shade, that means uh, now we are because once you when you started adding Camino 4 into the conical flask into the speaker. Camino 4 is of uh, purple color, but as soon as it added into the uh, conical flask, it will react with MB2 in the presence of MB3 and it decolorizes, right? It gets used up. But once it gets slightly into the excess, we get a light pink color. And this is where we have to stop the titration. This is our end point. So once we get a light pink color, light pink shade, that would be the end of titration. We'll note the final volume. And in case of rough titration, the final volume is 28.40. Just remember this thing that the readings of unit we have to take it up to two decimal place, right? So the rough titration is which would be final volume minus initial volume. This is 27.40. So this is rough titration. And then carry out as many accurate titrations as you think necessary to obtain consistent results. Make certain that any recorded results show the precision of your practical work. Record all of your burette readings and the volume of FB1 added in each accurate titration. So now we have uh, values for two experiments. I've done two experiments here. Experiment number one and experiment number two. So the experiment number, in experiment number one, uh, I took the initial volume 1.00 and the final volume was 25.10. So the volume of FB1 used is uh, 24.10. Right, and in the second experiment, I got volume of MP1 used as 24.00. So these are the two readings because uh, the difference between my first and second reading is of 0.1. So there is no need to perform a third titration. If you get similar values or a difference up to 0.2, no need to perform another titration. So these would be your two best titrations, right? Now, the next part of the question is related to calculations. From your accurate titration results, Obtain a suitable value for the volume of FV1 to be used in your calculations. Show clearly how you obtained this value. So the suitable volume for the uh, suitable value for the volume of FV1 to be used in your calculations. So we got two values which are 24.10 and 24.00. So these are the two titrations. So the volume of MP1 would be the average of these two values. So 24.10 plus 24.00 divided by 2. So that would be equal to 24.05. Right. Now the next part is give your answer to 2, 3, 4 and 5 to the appropriate number of significant figures which is around 2 to 4. Uh, use your answer to B to calculate the number of moles of potassium manganate. Now we have to calculate the moles of potassium manganate uh, FB1 which reacted with 25 cm cube of FB2. So now we have the volume of FB1, uh, sorry volume of FB2 that we have used and we have to calculate the number of moles of potassium manganate FB1 which reacted with 25 cm cube of FB2. So the concentration of potassium manganate was 0.02 moles per dm cube and we have the volume so we can calculate moles would be equal to c uh, number of mole is equals to c into v concentration so c into v concentration is 0.02 into volume was 24.05 divided by 1000 because we need answer in dm cube so 24.05 divided by thousand multiply by 0 0.02 this is 0 0.000481 0 0.000481 all right now the next part is use the information on page 2 to calculate the number of moles of iron 2 ions present in 25 cm cube of fb2 so we have moles of manganate ions and fb2 we have to calculate the moles of iron 2 ions present in 25 cm cube of fb2 so for that we will use the molar ratio as you can see from the equation that one mole of MnO4 
the ratio between MnO4 and Fe2 plus is one mole of MnO4 reacts with five moles of Fe2 plus. So that means whatever the number of moles of manganate we have, the number of moles of iron 2 plus would be five times of that. So the molar ratio between manganate ion and Fe2 plus is one ratio five. So the moles of Fe2 plus would be if we have 0.00041 moles of manganate so what would be the number of moles of fe2 plus so that would be equal to multiply by 5 0.002405 or you can write it in standard form as well calculate the mass of iron present in 25 cm cube of fe2 so now we have moles of fe2 plus and they want to find out the mass of iron. So for mass, we just simply use this formula mole is equals to given mass upon MR. So mass of iron moles are uh, 0. MR 0. 0.002405 is equals to mass and MR of iron is 55.8 which you can see from the periodic table. So 55.8 multiply by 0 0.002405 multiply by 55.8. So this is equal to 0 0.1342. 0 0.1342. So these are the, this is the mass of iron. Now the next part of the question is calculate the percentage by mass of iron. Calculate the percentage by mass of iron in the sample of iron wire. Right. The uh, now we have to calculate the mass of iron in the sample of iron wire. And if we move at the starting part of the question, it says that Fb2 is the solution of Fe uh, SO4 prepared by reacting 6.02 grams of iron wire. So this is the mass of iron wire that we had, and we reacted it with sulfuric acid and made one dm cube of solution. And this was Fb2. So let's suppose. This was the beaker in which we made FB2. We added 6.02 grams of iron wire and sulfuric acid. And the total volume of solution was 1 dm cube. So this is 1 dm cube FB2, which contain 6.02 grams iron wire, right? And then uh, we took 25 cm cube of FB2 in the conical flask. So we took 25 cm cube of FB2 and we reacted it with KMnO4, right? So uh, like in the previous part, the mass of iron that we calculated, this mass, 0 0.1342, this was the mass of iron in that 25 cm cube sample that we took from FB2. And now we have to calculate the percentage by mass of iron in the sample of iron wire. So first we, have, we would have to find out the mass of iron in total solution, that is in one dm cube. So that would be the mass of iron in 6.02 grams of iron wire. So for that, you would have to make a ratio here that 0 0.1342 grams. This much Fe2 is present in 25 cm cube. So what mass of zero point, uh, what mass of iron two ions would be present in 1000 cm cube, or you can say in one dm cube of solution. So that would be. Uh, like it would the mass would increase 40 times because 1000 divided by 25 that is 40 so 0 0.1342 multiply by 40 that would be 5.368 so in one dm cube of solution we have 5.368 grams iron and this is the mass of iron in 6.02 grams of iron wire and now we can easily find out the percentage by mass of iron in the sample of iron wire because the mass of iron wire that we have is 6.02 grams multiply by 100. So the percentage of iron that would be equal to 5.368 divided by 6.02 multiply by 100 and that is 89.16. Alright, so now the last part of the question is a student suggested that when a piece of iron wire was dissolved in a known volume and concentration of sulfuric acid, the number of moles of iron that reacted with the acid could be determined by working out how much acid was left after the reaction. The amount of excess acid could be determined by titrating the mixture with a known concentration of sodium hydroxide. Explain whether the student was correct. So they're saying that 
लाइक इफ वी एड अ पीस ऑफ आयरन वायर इन अ नोन कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड लेट सपोज इफ दिस इज सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एच टू एस ओ फोर एंड वी एडेड आयरन टू एफ आयरन वायर Uh, in this concentra uh, concentrated sulfuric acid whose concentration and volume is known the number of moles of iron that reacted with the acid because we know that as, as iron will react with acid so the number of moles of iron that reacted with the acid could be determined by working out how much acid was left after the reaction right so once the reaction is finished acid iron is the limiting reagent acid would be left so they are saying that uh, the acid which left after the end of the reaction the amount of excess acid could be determined by titrating the mixture with a known concentration of sodium hydroxide so this leftover acid will react with sodium hydroxide and the amount of leftover acid this will tell us about the uh, number of moles of iron that we had present by using the molar ratios so explain whether the student was correct so uh, it could be multiple answers now the most obvious answer is that sulfuric acid it might react with the impurities present in the iron wire so this method is not correct not correct as sulfuric acid might react with the impurities present in iron wire so not all the acid is reacting with iron Uh, some of the amount of acid uh, may also be reacting with the impurities present in iron wire so that's why this method is not suitable